My Psycho Entitled Mother Some backstory, my mother and I have never gotten along. Ever since I was little she has gone out of her way to be very toxic, controlling and overbearing over every aspect of my life while giving my siblings more freedom. This amped up when my kid was born. Me, me. B, my kid. E.M. Entitled Mom. Like I said in my backstory, E.M. and I have never gotten along. She liked controlling my money, my personal life, it was awful. The fights alone were good enough to be on television as one of those reality TV shows. I had lost good relationships with boys, even friends because of her. After B was born, her controlling ways got even worse. She butt in on my parenting, essentially taking over as B's primary caregiver and decision maker. She told me that because I lived in her house it was her right as the grandmother to do whatever she liked and if I didn't like it, I could sign off my rights to B and leave. Of course I refused to do this and stayed because I wouldn't abandon my little B. I will admit that I wasn't in the best financial position when I had B. B's father and I had broken up and forced me to move back home with EM. I hated it. Over the next couple of years, I let EM have her way all the while working my ass off at a night job and was saving money. She stole the money I had saved up more than once, so I was forced to get a bank account. I was fine with paper checks and cashing them at our local check cashing place up until that point but because she kept stealing, claiming my money was her money, I had to get creative with where I hid my cash until I got the bank account. Because it was a bank issued debit card, it requires a pin to purchase things. I of course came up with a special pin number that she would never guess. One night I am cooking dinner for my son and I and EM bursts in demanding to know where my money is. I tell her that I had set up a bank account for myself. She flipped out. She demanded to know the pin to my debit card so she could take out the money and I gave a big fat no. She screamed at me for being selfish and that she deserves the money more than me because me and me live in her house and if I wouldn't give up the pin then she would cut the card into ribbons so neither of us could have it. By this point, on the advice of a friend, I had begun recording EM whenever she began to misbehave for any reason. After telling EM I wouldn't give up the pin, she grabbed the scissors and chopped my debit card into tiny pieces. I knew I could just go take out cash if I needed to and I had discovered a convenient hiding place where I had been stashing my cash, so I wasn't worried. I requested a new card the next day and went about my business. Some time later, when I had saved enough, I began looking into apartments. I found one close to work and there was a daycare center a few blocks away, which would be perfect for B and I. I got a friend to go with me and after a bit of talking with my new landlord, I signed the lease, paid the first three months of rent off and got the keys. I was stoked to say the least. I went to EM's house and began packing right away. She barged into my room without even knocking and asked just what the hell I was doing. Of course, I picked up my phone and began recording right away. I told her that me and B were moving out. Without any hesitation, she began screaming, demanding to know where I was taking her kid. I refused to tell her. So what does EM do? She calls the police. The police arrive and before I had the chance to explain the situation, EM begins ranting and raving that I am kidnapping her child. Her child. The officer looks at me with suspicion but then relaxes when I tell him B is my kid and that we are moving out. EM flips out even more, demanding the officer to arrest me and force me to sign over my parental rights to her and to interrogate me into giving up my bank details. The officer sighed. That kind of sigh like why the hell he was even called out to this situation. He told my mother that he could not arrest me for moving out because I'm an adult and B is my child and he couldn't force me to sign over my parental rights, nor could he force me to give up my bank information. He then told her to if she wanted to go for grandparents' rights, she most certainly could but given how unhinged she is just because I am moving out, it doesn't seem like she is within the right frame of mind to be anywhere near any child, let alone her own grandchild. This did not go over well at all. As the officer was leaving and I was in the process of packing up some of B's things, EM lunged at me and began scratching at my face. I naturally defended myself and shoved her away from me. She screamed at the officer to arrest me for assaulting her. The officer sighed again and said he had seen her lunge at me first and me shoving her was me defending myself. He then added that someone would be going to jail tonight and told her to put her hands behind her back. I never felt so grateful for the police in my life. 
I will add with a part 2. My mother is psycho and entitled part 2. First off, thank you to the supportive comments from part 1. Secondly, part 2 is a doozy so strap in and enjoy the crazy train ride. Again. Me. Be my kid. EM entitled mother. While EM was being carted off to jail for a nice, relaxing cool down and lock up for the evening, I took the opportunity to pack everything I could within the time I had. My siblings were understandably upset EM had been arrested but after explaining the situation, they didn't really try to stop me either. I secured a moving van and packed up everything and went to my new apartment with B. A friend helped me unpack some basic things, helped me set up B's bed, and we got Chinese food. The feeling of relief swept over me like a tidal wave. After years of abuse, stealing, being controlled and being stolen from I was free. I don't think I ever cried so hard. I'm still in therapy. Eventually, I was unable to continue working nights because finding childcare at those hours was impossible and almost everyone in my family had disowned me for hurting EM. I found a job that paid close to $3,000 a month and it was above my skill level but thankfully it had a full training program and I was able to afford the daycare close by and still make enough to pay the bills and have a little extra for saving and fun things for me and B to do on the weekends. While I was glad to get away from EM, B would often say he missed her and how much he liked the presents she gave him. While I didn't let B go without, he certainly wasn't getting as much as he did before. Of course I didn't want to shatter his view of his grandmother and break his little heart but I didn't want to lie to him either. I told him that EM was no longer in our lives because she treated me very poorly and it had gotten to the point where I couldn't handle it anymore. B is 7 now. He understands when adults are being mean to each other. He knows EM was mean to me but he did like that she was nice to him. He's a kid so I won't hold that against him even if it makes me grumble a lit. Fast forward a year. I had made our apartment into a home. B's bedroom was stocked full of toys, clothes, a bed, books, and the fridge was always full. On my income one was able to buy myself the queen bed of my dreams. I afforded us a comfortable life. While we weren't rich, we had enough money to live and having financial stability was something I never thought I would have under EM's control. I had even started seeing a very awesome guy I had met at a luncheon my boss was throwing. We hit it off immediately and B absolutely adores him. After having NC with EM for the year, I was surprised to see I had a message over Facebook from one of my siblings. They asked me if I'd be willing to talk to EM and try mending the rift because she missed B and wanted to mend our broken family for B's sake. I didn't want to. I felt like this was some ploy to get her claws into B and hurt me again. Just looking at the message made me have a PTSD episode. I was scared very scared. After my boyfriend helped me to calm down and told me that talking to my therapist might help, I called her and set up an emergency appointment. My therapist told me that EM reaching out might be sincere and the most that will happen is the visit going bad and I go back to NC again. I wasn't worried about there being an argument. I was worried EM might steal or worse kidnap B if I turn my back. My paranoia was all over the place. After thinking it over for a while, I decided not to let fear control me. I messaged my sibling back and we made plans to meet up in a public place for lunch. I agreed to bring B with me but I made the condition that my boyfriend would join us as well. My sibling wasn't happy with this but hesitantly agreed. Red flag number one. As the day of the lunch approached, EM sent a message to me on Facebook saying how much she missed B and that she had loads of presents for him. I said I am sure he will be very grateful for the gifts and EM said she had one for me too. To avoid an argument I thanked her and told her I would see her at the lunch. She assured me I would be shocked when I opened my present with a devil grin emoji. Red flag 2. On the day of the lunch my anxiety was shooting through the roof. I kept changing my mind but my boyfriend assured me he would be there for my every step of the way and if I was uncomfortable and wanted to leave, we would grab B and get the fuck out of there. After some more freaking out, we got into the car and arrived at the restaurant. My boyfriend was kind enough to offer to pay for everyone's lunch and EM took full advantage, ordering the most expensive thing on the menu, including an expensive cocktail and even an extra dish to take home for later. I was understandably annoyed at this but my boyfriend simply smiled and said whatever EM wanted. After we ate, B and EM hugged and B opened all of the gifts she had gotten for him. 
He was super happy and excited to take everything home to play with them, but EM stopped him and said that the toys would be for her house and that he was welcome to come play with them whenever he wanted. I nearly spat out my drink. This got EM's attention and she smiled at me, that smile was faker than fake, and said she wanted to hand deliver my gift in person. She handed me a large brown envelope. I almost didn't want to take it, worried she had put anthrax or something in it, but I took it and opened it. She was petitioning the court for grandparents' rights. I immediately exploded, standing and throwing the papers at her, shouting at her that she will never get her hands on B and she would over my dead and rotting corpse. I grabbed B, my boyfriend, and we immediately left. B was sad he couldn't keep the gifts but I promised to buy all of them for him myself and we didn't need EM in our lives. I felt humiliated and tricked. The only good thing to come out of this horrible episode is that they were left with the bill. There is more so part 3 is coming. My mother is psycho and entitled part 3. Continuing on from part 2. Me me. B my kid. EM entitled mother. In the last entry, EM was petitioning for grandparents' rights. I had never been involved with the courts before. I was pretty freaked out, not to mention terrified of the lies EM might tell them about me. After some talk with my boyfriend and therapist, they urged me to hire an attorney. I found a fantastic family law attorney who was incredibly kind but very direct and didn't bullshit me. I still had flash drives of recordings of the times my mother abused me, a lot of the arguments we had but my attorney dashed any hope of using them. Audio recordings weren't admissible unless both parties agreed to be recorded. I almost gave up hope on the spot but he assured me that my EM's previous arrest and the testimony of the officer who had arrested her the night I moved out, plus my boyfriend's witness statement and the fact that EM hadn't seen me in over a year was more than enough for a judge to deny EM of any grandparent rights. At the hearing, in classic Karen form, EM played the victim, stating that I was the aggressor the night I moved out. That I smoked weed around B and I was a prostitute who brought strange men into her home and slept with them in front of B. She came up with so many lies during the hearing that I swear shit was about to start spewing from the browns of her eyes. She even went so far as to accuse my boyfriend of molesting B. The judge then asked if she had any proof of these claims and she looked at me with that fake motherly tone saying she didn't want to ruin her precious daughter's life but this whole thing has forced her hand and she is looking out for her grandchild's best interest. I couldn't contain the snort that I audibly let out. After my siblings testified, they merely repeated the lies but couldn't provide any proof, the judge dismissed her testimony as hearsay but did order me to undergo a drug test. When it was my turn to testify, I detailed the years of abuse and theft. I told the judge about the money that EM had stolen from me many times and the time she cut up my debit card because I wouldn't give her my PIN number. I even reiterated about how she demanded the cop arrest me and to force me to give up my bank details. When I stepped down from the stand, the officer was called in to testify. EM turned white as a ghost. The officer corroborated my story. EM began shouting at the officer, calling him a liar but the judge had the police report in front of him. He warned EM he would hold her in contempt of court if she continued with her outburst. My therapist and my boyfriend also testified. The judge denied EM's petition for grandparents' rights. He even said he believed she was in deep need of counseling and that she displays instability to the point it is disturbing. EM was shaking with rage. She held her compor, shockingly and just walked out of the courtroom, glaring at me as she passed by. Outside the courtroom, I told my siblings that I will never let EM into my life or B's life after this and if they continue to side with her, then they too will have to accept that I will have NC with them. My boyfriend, who I married, and I agreed to try putting EM and that side of the family behind us. Because I had no family who cared, our wedding was small with only his side in attendance. I didn't mind. His family had welcomed B and I openly and accepted us. We moved into a larger home just a few miles away from my old one and agreed we wanted to start a family together and give B a little sibling. If there is one thing that helped me get through the years of torture, it was being a mom and I'm damn good at it. Husband even legally adopted B to claim as his own. You'd think this would be a happy ending but nope, the bitch is like herpes. She keeps coming back. Part 4 soon. My mother is psycho and entitled part 4. I know this is a novel but I'm actually glad to be doing this. It's cathartic in a way. 
You may notice this all takes place over the course of many years. Just wanted to clarify it didn't all happen at once. This is an accumulation of instances where my EM was toxic and dangerous. Thanks for listening. It means a lot. Me, me. Be my kid. EM entitled mother. My boyfriend had proposed and we got married in a small courthouse wedding with his parents and siblings in attendance. It wasn't the big massive wedding of my dreams, but we spent the money on our honeymoon, which was fantastic. Fast forward two years. I am still in therapy and it helps to have a husband I can turn to when I am feeling stressed or my PTSD starts to flare up, as I call it but I start to notice he is being distant toward me. To make a long story short, he had been cheating on me for well over a year with a coworker. I was able to move B and I back to our old apartment complex. It wasn't the same apartment but the transition was pretty easy and I had enough vacation time at work to take a few days off to get everything sorted out. Ex-husband and I divorced but agreed to stay amicable for B's sake. A few months go by and I was starting to get over the divorce. B and I were spending more time together and I was supporting him through his favorite thing at that time. Little League. He tried out for the school team and got picked right away. I was so proud of him. It was better than him being obsessed with video games. After a little time I get a Facebook message from one of my siblings again. Therapy had been so great with helping me overcome those emotions so I didn't react as badly as I had before. They wanted me to forgive EM for how she acted and that she was deeply sorry for it and truly wanted to mend the rift. If she was so sorry why didn't she message me herself? She has my Facebook. I asked my sibling why now and they said because the divorce, it isn't right that I'm alone now. I hadn't told anyone in my family about my divorce. I'm pretty much in C with all of them. I'm guessing word just spread around about it. I told my sibling that I was fine and I still didn't want any contact with EM after she lied about me to a judge. Sibling said EM had been in therapy and realized that she was wrong and thought if she messaged me herself, she would just get blocked and ignored. Hearing that EM was seeing a therapist actually made me happy. Maybe now EM could see that her abuse and torturing me was toxic and that it destroyed our relationship. Because I'm an absolute fucking idiot, I asked my sibling if she could watch my apartment and be while I take a short but much needed vacation with some friends. I would only be gone for the weekend, as we were going to the spa. I also asked sibling not to tell EM my address. Just as a measure of safety, I asked my ex-husband to check on my apartment from time to time over the weekend. I thought this would give B the chance to get to know their family a little and I would get a nice quiet two days of pampering. I drive to the spa and I'm there not even three hours before I get a frantic call from ex-husband. My apartment was trashed, the walls smeared with dog feces and the police are there looking for me. Of course I am panicking at this point and had to drive the hour-long trip back home, terrified of what I am about to walk into. When I get there, I am arrested on the spot for drug possession, child neglect and child endangerment. I am absolutely, 100% shocked by this. I don't do drugs. I don't even smoke weed. I have a couple drinks on occasion but other than that, I'm pretty much a square. I am hauled down to the police station and interrogated at length about the accusations being labeled against me. EM had made a call to them after seeing her grandson covered in bruises and dog feces. We don't even own a dog. After the police searched my trashed apartment, they found the drugs sitting on my kitchen counter. Upon hearing that it was EM that called the police on me, my PTSD flared up and I began to have the most severe anxiety attack that I ever had and had to be admitted to the hospital for a psych evaluation. I don't remember much of it because I apparently had fainted many times from the high amounts of stress. The on-call therapist told me I was screaming why is she doing this to me and that I wanted to die. After three days of being on medication that made me into a literal zombie, the police came to talk to me again. He told me that EM refused to admit B to the hospital for an examination, stating that she knows he has bruises because she saw them and didn't need a doctor to tell her that her baby was abused. Ex-husband being the godsend that he is, asked the police to take B from EM's custody and after an extensive examination, B had no bruises, other than the scrapes he got from Little League. He told the officer that EM had told him that she was going to be his mother now. He made sure to drive home the point that EM was scary and he was afraid she may hurt him if he tried to escape.
Both my siblings were questioned and to save their own skins admitted that EM told them to wait until I wasn't home and B was with them so she and my other sibling could go and trash my apartment and plant the drugs. EM denied this, but the evidence and all of the instances where she showed her clear mental instability, she was arrested on charges of domestic abuse, theft, destruction of property, lying to police, and the worst of all, kidnapping. My siblings were also charged. I also found out that EM being in therapy was a lie and that EM had no intention of changing and was merely biding her time. I have since been granted a permanent restraining order against EM and my siblings and they are in no way to contact me and if any other relative tries to contact me on their behalf, that would be a violation and they would be charged even more. I will be in therapy for probably for the rest of my life at this point and B has begun seeing the same therapist. My ex-husband and I are working through our own issues. Knowing that EM will get out of prison at some point, we are considering moving out of state. Quick edit in case anyone is wondering. My boss has been the best. He paid for a professional cleaning crew to clean up my apartment and replace my living room television. B is happy about that. I'm sure some might be wondering why I still have anything to do with my ex-husband. We are working through those issues with therapy and there is a lot of trust to build back up but we love one another and are committed to being good for each other as well as B. There are boundaries that we set for one another and he even pays child support to help with B and is even taking him to ball games and the two of them are incredibly close. B already lost his birth father, I don't want him losing his stepfather too. It's what works for us and someday I know we'll all be just fine. For now, we are happy with a no commitment friendship while we go through counseling. B is in therapy as well and it helps him a lot to cope with the loss of his birth father and going through the traumatic experience his grandmother had put him through. I am now talking with a cousin who knows how crazy my mother is and after I moved out all those years ago was ranting about how she could make me suffer for taking B away from her and losing out on all of that money. Greed and mental illness do not mix. Second edit. I wanted to quickly add this because I realized I had glazed over some things. My mother and siblings were all sentenced to jail for their role in destroying my apartment and attempting to frame me, not to mention kidnapping B, sister got 5 years, my brother got 8 and my mother got 15 years. I wasn't present for the sentencing portion but I did receive copies of each of their sentences. My mother was ordered to undergo a psych evaluation. It's been a few days since I posted and a lot of people are suggesting we move out of state. We are considering it. Both X and I are able to transfer but I am worried about tugging B away from the family he has here. My ex-husband's family I mean. I have NC with my mother's family. And EX doesn't want to move. He thinks that moving means they have one and that they scared us off. I tell him it's a matter of safety, not pride and he gets that. We're still discussing it whenever B isn't in the room. We have already settled on a location if we decide to move. It would be a big change from our lives here but it would definitely be a nice change. Another thing that is stopping us is our relationship. We aren't married anymore and currently don't live together. EX says in order for things to work, we would need to get married again, or at least move in together. I'm currently thinking about it but I'm leaning toward moving B and I back in with him. At least to get away from my old apartment because some of my mother's relatives know where it is. It's a lot to think about but I am discussing it with my therapist as well. She thinks moving would be good for us. My j &M is now in jail for years of abuse and kidnapping. I'm likely going to be in therapy for the rest of my life and my son is now in therapy as well. Bill and I are working through our own issues in couples therapy. While my j &M will spend the next 15 years in prison for what she's done, I do not want to be anywhere near here when she does. I have a permanent protective order against her and my siblings. They cannot contact me for any reason and if any relative contacts me on their behalf, then it is a violation and they will be charged for violating the protective order. Bill and I are currently discussing moving to a new state to start over. We can transfer our jobs easily so that isn't stopping us but we would be leaving his family behind and I and my son have grown close with them despite Bill and I being divorced. I don't know what I would do without them but I know that me and my son will not be anywhere near this place when the JN lunatics get out of prison. Edit, so I just received a call from a victim's advocate that works through the state police. He told me that my mother had outright refused to undergo the mandatory psych evaluation in prison, saying her rights were being violated. After the threat of her incarceration lasting even longer than the 15 years, she relented. 
From what the VA is telling me, it took about four sessions in total for them to get anything out of her. When she finally opened up, everything she told the psychologist showed that my mother is clearly a sociopath. The VA believes that treatment and the prison time will help my mother, but knowing how good my mother is at putting on an act, I highly doubt it. My crazy mother is contacting me again. I truly believe that five states worth of distance would be enough to keep my crazy mother away from me and my son, but I was wrong. My mother was released early from prison, thanks to COVID. Several prisoners in the prison she was in had come down with COVID and her along with several others were released. I was not informed as I believe I should have been and I found out in a Facebook message from my ILs. In case anyone is curious, my mother attempted to frame me by having my brother trash my apartment and smearing dog crap on my walls and planting drugs in my kitchen. My mother made reports against me for abusing my son in an attempt to take my son away from me and put me in jail. My sister was babysitting my son. I had gone to a spa with some friends from work and was only there a couple of hours before my now husband, former ex at the time but were back together now, called to tell me what was going on at my apartment. I was arrested and interrogated but had to be put into the psych ward from having an anxiety attack and wanting to die. My mother kidnapped my son, but the joke was on her because my husband had legally adopted my son and he was promptly taken out of her house and she was arrested after my siblings squealed on her when they were interrogated. My mother had done many awful things to me during my childhood and my adult years, including stealing money from me, beating me and trying to take over raising my son. She tried having me arrested for not giving her MY bank details and kidnapping my own child. I went no contact with her after my son and I moved out. Fast forward a few years and the paragraph above was the end result that lead to my mother and siblings going to jail. My husband, Bill, and I got remarried in a double wedding with my best friend, Barbara, and her now husband, Dave. We all moved to the new state and we were finally getting on with our lives. I transferred from the old branch to the new one and have been working. Bill works from home. We both make good money together and our schedules are flexible so we make time to do family activities with our son every weekend. I thought life, even with COVID was pretty close to perfect, until a week ago. I was checking Facebook at work, like I always do when I have a couple of minutes between calls when I see a message from my ILs. My mother had been released from jail and showed up to their house demanding to know where me and my son were. They refused to tell her and slammed the door in her face. My heart jumped into my throat while reading the message. I then noticed I have a message request from someone named Deb. It simply read, where are you? I'm not stupid and I know it was mother attempting to contact me so I blocked that account and called the police in my old state. They stated that unless I can prove it's her, there isn't much they can do. I hope that if I kept blocking anyone I don't know who contacts me, things would be fine but I was wrong again. On my Facebook, I do specify where I work, so she found out and contacted the old branch of my job and one of my former co-workers, who was informed of the need for secrecy but didn't care, let it slip where my family and I had moved to. My former boss found out and fired that employee for violating his instructions. He called me to let me know and to apologize for my mother finding out while on his watch. He has since contacted my current boss and now my current co-workers know that if anyone calls looking for me to not say a word and to forward them to our answering service or leave them on hold until they hang up. Sure enough, mother got the phone number to my job and has been calling up to 10 times a day trying to get me on the phone. Thankfully my co-workers have been amazing gatekeepers and have not catered to my psycho mother's demands, but simply leave her on hold until she hangs up. I have discarded my old phone carrier and have upgraded to a new plan with a new phone and phone number but my direct work number is public and I can use it no matter where I am in the country. Mother found it on my LinkedIn page and has been calling me non-stop, but she hasn't left any voicemails. She then called from a number that I assumed was a potential client and I answered. I am still panicking from this phone call. It goes as follows. Me, good morning, this is, OP. Mother, hi. OP. This is your mother. Me, mom, you know you're not supposed to contact me. Mother, I know but I just want to talk to you. Me, I don't want to talk to you. Mother, listen, OP. You can't avoid me forever. This foolish charade of yours has gone on long enough, don't you think? Don't you think it's time you set your selfish wants aside and do what's right for Brendan? He needs his grandmother. Me, are you joking? 
Why the hell would my son need you? You tried to kidnap him after having, brother, smear dog shit on my walls and plant drugs in my apartment. If Bill hadn't adopted him, who knows what you would have done. You need to leave us alone. Mother, you're not fit to be a mother, OP. You never have been. I can do better for Brandon than you and that brute you're shacking up with. Feel free to keep that man but let my grandson be with a family that truly loves him. Me, my blood boiling at this point, over my dead body. I then hung up and blocked the number. I contacted the police again and told them what happened and they now acknowledge that she poses a risk to me and my son so they are looking for her. She lost the house she was living in so who knows where she is at this point. One thing about my job that I love is that I can bring my laptop home and take calls and deal with clients from home if I choose but I enjoy working in the office because my coworkers are great and I can meet with clients face to face but now I have to invite them to my house and that comes with even more anxiety. School is starting soon so I made sure to fill out my son's emergency packet, including the list of who is allowed to take him out of school for any reason, just in case my mother tries to kidnap him from school. Barbara and Dave are up to speed on everything so they will be keeping a lookout while my son and I basically hide away in the house until the psycho bitch gives up. We already have two guns that we keep secure in a safe in our closet. It's password protected and our son doesn't know it. I've been going to the gun range to learn how to use mine and to get over my anxiety of them. I'm also considering self-defense classes. The final nail in my psycho mother's coffin. Trigger warning. I will be speaking of sexual assault. Hello, Reddit fam. It's been a while but I just wanted to get on here and finally give an update, as I now can. If anyone remembers, my mother mistreated me all of my life. She stole from me, abused me, tried to steal my bank details and framed me with drugs so she could kidnap my son. And that is just the abridged version of the crazy shit my mother has done to me. The last time I heard from her, she had been calling my job non-stop, calling me unfit and demanding I give her my son. Since then the police have been searching for her. She had an active warrant in my old state and hid herself away to avoid being arrested but that didn't stop her from contacting me and harassing me with the threats to take my son. My son Brandon who is almost 11 thinks she's a crazy bitch and said if he ever had to go with her, he would jump in front of a semi-truck. A bit dark, but I agree with the sentiment. Because of all of the constant calls and harassing voicemails mother left at my work, my boss had to let me go, which was devastating but I was able to secure a new job quickly. I actually work from home full time and get paid more, so I am not too heartbroken over the loss. We converted our spare bedroom into my office and not having to doll myself up on the daily and just lounge in my sweats and answer calls has been pretty freaking sweet. It gives me more time with my family and bills and my love life couldn't be better and this is evidence that I am now pregnant with our first child together. I just found out two months ago. Somehow psycho bitch found out and I don't know how. We didn't announce anything on Facebook or tell anyone but my IELTS. I secretly think one of them let it slip to a relative and the snowball effect made its way to my mother's ear because I started getting harassing messages from my uncles, both of whom are convicted pedophiles, demanding to know where I am and no amount of ignoring them or threats of police were making them leave me alone. Eventually I blocked the accounts when I saw ignoring them wasn't working and for a time things were quiet and I felt I could breath a little. I want to confess something and it is embarrassing. My grandfather on my mother's side molested all of his kids my mother included. They grew up believing it was the norm and my grandmother did nothing to stop it and let it go on, even encouraged it. My uncles were convicted of raping and molesting my cousin who is now in therapy for life. I don't want to go into more grim detail as it is traumatic even for me, I was also molested by my uncles when I was a kid and I know no amount of jail time has cured them of their sick and twisted ways of thought. Therapy has been instrumental in me moving past my traumatic childhood and given me the tools to be stronger and a good mother to my son. You can see why I want to keep my children as far away from them as possible. Two weeks I was working and I got a call on my work number. When I picked up, it was mother calling me again. I found out she had hired a PI to find out my new job and my address, which sent me into a rage I had never experienced before. I can't even transcribe it because it mostly consisted of her screaming more threats that not only was she going to take my son but she would now be taking my unborn child. Straight from my belly if need be. As I had a recorder on my phone, I made sure to record the call for the police and hung up on her. 
I did a reverse call log and saw it was from a Google Voice number, which if no one knows what that is it is a number you can link to your actual phone number to avoid your private number getting out. I use it with my cell phone. I called the police and they came over to listen to the recording, but without knowing if she was in my old state or this one, there was little they could do. Tracing the call was pointless as it was from a Google Voice number. So after talking with Bill, we tried contacting Google. After being given the runaround for several days, we finally got hold of someone willing to help. The Google Voice number was disconnected and the private number blocked from their service. This must have sent mother into a rage because she called my work number from the actual number to scream at me even more and I finally had her. It was my uncle's number. I could hear my uncle in the background threatening to rape and kill my son. Upon hearing that, after so long, a fire was lit under my ass because I wasn't going to let anyone fuck with my babies. I called the police in my old state and let them know and sent the recording directly via Google Drive. If you can't already tell, my job uses Google services for everything. Within a few days, the police had a search warrant for my uncle's house. From what I was told, my uncle resisted and was arrested after getting zapped by a taser. Mother, who thought she was so smart was found hiding in a closet and taken into custody. My other uncle is also now in custody for the continued harassment of me. They searched my uncle's computer and found files upon files of CP, pictures of me and my son, chat logs between him and underage girls of varying degrees of disgusting, including disgusting pictures. My other uncle confessed to knowing everything and agreed to testify for a lesser charge. Between the three of them, there are enough charges to keep them behind bars for more than a decade and this time my mother can't use COVID as an excuse to walk away free. I am finally free. My family is safe and I am okay. I've been told they were denied bail and I will have to travel to my old state to testify against them but because of COVID and a lot of other cases ahead of them, they will likely not see the judge for two years. Fine by me. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me for this long, Reddit fam. I can't thank you enough for helping me through all this.